I think the number one key is really continuing to serve the people who are trusting us to help them along their right. teaching and parenting journey. And so that to me has just always been at the heart of everything that I do. Everything our team does is making sure that we're really keeping our community in mind and making sure we're providing value for them. Hello and welcome to the Dyslexia Mom Boss Podcast, the show that helps you not only feel empowered and knowledgeable, but confident and a boss mom in the dyslexia journey. I'm your host, Dr. Lauren. back to another incredible episode of the Dyslexia Mom Boss podcast. So as you know, I am your host, Dr. Lauren, and today we are coming to you with another phenomenal episode. Now, what I'm so excited to delve into is the science of reading as usual, but also my guest is an author, a wife, a mom, a CEO of a company that we're going to talk about. And I just think you're going to get so much amazing information in this episode. So Malia, I would love if you could quickly introduce yourself and then we will kick off this conversation. Well, thank you so much for having me, Lauren. I am just thrilled to get to hang out with you for a little bit. My name is Malia Hollowell. And I, as you said, I'm an author of my new book, The Science of Reading in Action. But when I'm not researching and writing and serving teachers. I am spending time with my family of five. I run a company called Plato to Plato. Yeah, I guess I wear a lot of hats. You do. <laughs> you absolutely do. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And you know, I always like to share that because I know most of my audience appears to be millennial women and probably moms. And I just think for many moms out there, we do wear so many hats and sometimes it's just really not talked about. And so I just love empowering women in so many different capacities on this podcast as well. But you all are here to learn a little bit more about the science of reading and dyslexia. So I open up this question to a lot of my guests who have their own businesses or are really, you know, pro science of reading. And I think that this is a really great question for you, Malia. So it's definitely clear that you have a deep love and passion for helping teachers understand the science of reading. But I really want to know, were you always a science of reading guru or did you start your teaching career like most educators doing balanced literacy or using leveled readers? I'd love to hear a little bit about that journey. Well, I was a hot mess. Let's <laughs> 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 put that out there. We're not even going to pretend. I started teaching back in 2003 and I had one literacy class during my elementary ed training. Of course. So, you know, right? I mean, we were told that kids just needed to get good books in their hands and they oh would be gosh. able to connect all of the dots they needed. Yeah. And so when I showed up on the very first day of school, I had a second grade class and I just assumed all of my second graders were going to be fluently reading, obviously. Right. And it would be a golden road to reading bliss for the rest of our school year. <laughs> and that is just not what it looks like at all. I had about half of my students who were really still struggling to connect the dots they needed. And as you can imagine, I was completely unprepared to support them. So my worst memory of this entire journey is sitting across the table from my students' parents and it was parent-teacher conference time in October, oh, and I was yeah. so nervous of because course. I knew I was essentially failing their kids. I was right. not able to actually support them, especially our struggling readers. And so I had a pit in my stomach. My hands were sweating. My armpits were sweating so much. I actually <laughs> took Kleenex from our classroom box. Oh my gosh. In my armpits, just so that I would not be <clears throat> discovered as the fraud that I felt like I was. Wow. So, to say that I've come far is an understatement. And I'm so grateful for the journey I've had. Yeah. Because when I talk to teachers in DMs or we connect on email and they are sharing the same anxiety, I know that feeling. I can re-experience it in a second. Right. Just the worst feeling to feel like you are failing your kids. So I'm assuming because you had one class and then you, you know, thought, oh, well, my littles know how to read you probably were doing more balanced literacy with some leveled readers. Is that about on par? That is exactly it. Yes, we yes. were doing a lot of balanced literacy, zero phonics instruction, I would say. Even wow. I would say it was not even balanced. It was probably unbalanced. <laughs> so <laughs> very, little, 
<laughs> very little phonics instruction and no phonological or phonemic awareness. We weren't even practicing that at all. Leveled readers, absolutely, that did not connect to any right. skills that we were actually explicitly teaching. If you had a list of all the things not to do, I was what you were doing. all of them off. I was getting an A plus in that. Oh my gosh. So at what point were you like, what is the science of reading and I need it in my life? I am a school board director in our town and okay. I to be at a meeting with one of our principals and he said, oh yeah, you know, our second grade team is really excited about the science of reading. And I was like, the science of reading? I need that. So right. I went home and I Googled science of reading and expected to see a book or a <laughs> called the science of reading. And obviously, as you know, that's just not what it is, but yeah. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Yeah. But that's so true. If you don't know what it is, you're expecting a book. <laughs> right. So I decided I would write the book. That's why I named my book, The Science of Reading in Action. In action. I was like, you know what? People need to be able to have a go-to spot yes. where they yes. can actually understand what the science of reading really is and then be empowered to have the tools they need to start implementing it right away. Yeah. And you know what? Let's just jump to that talking point now because it's just like, it's on your mind. It's on my mind. I know the listeners are like, what is this book? So I have to tell you, first of all, I love that you reached out to me and sent me a free copy. I mean, I was just filled with so much love and I love your packaging. Oh my gosh, your packaging is amazing. And it really makes me feel so special. And I know that when you send out things to people, they feel that love from you. So I just have to like totally promote that. Anything you guys buy from Malia, it's going to be filled with love. <laughs> and I just love that. But I will say what I love about this book. And you know, me, I've been steeped in science of reading. That's how I started my career. I don't know anything different. Just like you, Malia, I actually had maybe one class reading methods class in my special ed elementary master's program. And I didn't know anything about dyslexia until I started at a specialized private school. So when I am talking to people and when I listen to their journey, I'm like, wow, there's so much that so many people didn't know. And your book is just a testament to like putting it all in one place. And so I love the visuals. I am such a visual learner. So like as I'm flipping through, my eyes go straight to the pictures. They're so relatable. It's so digestible for both parents and teachers because I think more than often, parents are just like, I don't understand. You know, like the teacher needs to know, I don't understand this, but I know something's not right. But it really caters, I feel, to both. And I love your examples. I love the resources, the note taking, the interaction with the QR codes. I mean, this is an amazing book. And my personal favorite is how you outlined all of the research per chapter. That to me is like my ultimate favorite because then I can be like, oh, I love this in chapter one. And instead of going, you know, like a bibliography and looking at the last name, I can go to the chapter and then I can find it. So I love this book and I just really want to hear Obviously, we know your inspiration, but a little bit more about how this book came to fruition and what your hope is for it. Well, first of all, thank you. Yes. Uh, hearing, hearing your thoughts and uh, reflections on it is truly a dream come true because Aww. you highlighted so many goals that I had for this book. Awesome. When I started the process. I have, like you, taken so many teacher trainings. I have read so many boring professional development books. <laughs> yes. And I understand the value of them. So please do not think that I'm saying that we should stop reading journal articles. That's not what I'm saying at all. Right, right. But I think that for most teachers who are in the classroom and most parents who are at home really wanting to support kids today, right now, they need an easier option. They need yes. to be able to pick something up and not get bogged down by fancy scientific jargon that nobody can understand. They don't need right. to have a dictionary next to them. They need to be able to understand right here, right now, what the science says about how brains learn to read. And then the most important next step is giving them the tools that they need in order to start using it right away. Because right. there is such a big disconnect, unfortunately, I think, between a lot of trainings and PD books and the actual boots on the ground people who are implementing it. And I don't want people to have to spend hours and hours Googling these tools and strategies. I want them to be able to just get them right away. So that was my vision. And I'm 
delighted and overjoyed to hear that you had that experience with the book because that was my goal. Yeah. What I love the most about what you said is the parents need, and teachers, but I'm thinking more about parents that I interact with, they need this information now. They really need it in their hands. And so I recommend getting this book. It's on your website, right? It's on Amazon. Like where can people find this book? Yes, it's everywhere books are sold. So on Amazon, just type in The Science of Reading in Action. It's on Barnes and Noble, all the places. I love that. If you're a tired teacher looking for a way out of the classroom and want to turn your expertise and talents into becoming your boss, creating your flexible schedule, and building a business that serves your needs and wants, then you want to subscribe to my Tired Teacher to Teacherpreneur Mindset Monday episodes. If you want a taste of what it's like to transition out of the classroom to becoming a teacherpreneur, then join me every Monday for 15 minutes. This exclusive subscription offers a community, resources, and access to me all for $5 a month. Put that $5 towards your morning coffee from Starbucks to good use and subscribe today. Click the link in the show notes and hang out with me and other teachers every Monday at 5 a.m. See you there. So definitely if you're walking or driving, wait till you've pulled over, but definitely look at the show notes and click the link and check out the book. And I don't think you will regret it. So Malia, I want to talk a little bit about, because there's so many things I want to touch on, you know, you wear so many hats, but you know, as I said, you're a mom, you're an entrepreneur, and you've grown your business, Plato to Plato, to having such a large social media following. So you're huge on Teachers Pay Teachers, and you're massive on Instagram. And honestly, you really inspire me to continue spreading my message with my business because I aspire to have as many followers and make that huge impact as well. But can you tell us more about Plato to Plato and what resources that you highly recommend for teachers and parents to use for their dyslexic learners. Yes, absolutely. Well, I'll say to just touching on what you were talking about in terms of building the community that we have now, this has been 11 years in the making. So yeah. I think a lot of times people look at a business or, you know, a social media influencer and they think, oh my gosh, they must have just yeah. had overnight success. But in most cases, that is not the path that they took at all. It's taken a lot of time, energy, effort. And I think the number one key is really continuing to serve the people who are trusting us to help them along their right. teaching and parenting journey. And so that to me has just always been at the heart of everything that I do. Everything our team does is making sure that we're really keeping our community in mind and making sure we're providing value for them. So in terms of specific resources that I think would be most relevant for your audience Number one at the top of my list are phonological awareness warmups. We have mm. so many people who come to us and they say, gosh, you know, this is a missing component from the work that I'm doing with kids. I want them to have these phonological awareness skills because I know it's like a house, right? It's the foundation right. of a house. And if there are cracks and holes in the foundation, well, there's no way that the walls and the roof are going to be steady and strong. So right. kids absolutely have to have a strong, sturdy foundation of phonological awareness skills. We know that. And so we created a really simple way for anybody to be able to practice those skills every day. Now, what's interesting is I'll give you a little teaser of what is to come in terms of version two of these warmups, mm. because the research is showing that of all the phonological awareness skills, Anemic awareness is most important. We know that. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, you know what? How can we take these daily practice five minutes and make them even more effective? And so we're going to be updating them. We're in the process of doing that, that they really focus even more on the phonemic awareness components that we know kids need even more above and beyond all the rest. Right. No, that's amazing. And I think that's the other thing too. When you're in this field, you have to be up to date. Like I always make the joke and it's really not a funny joke, but I'm like, listen, this is the truth. You would not send your child to a pediatrician who's pulling from research from 30 years ago. You just wouldn't. It's not up to date. And I think even though the science of reading has been around for quite some time, you still want to be up on what is new, what's happening. 
And I know you have a chapter in here about sight words. And when I started teaching in 2011, we had word walls and we were doing some sort of memorization, but still kind of making it multi-sensory or having to really chunk these sight words or high frequency words. But now there's heart words and you can sound these words out. And I think that that is such an interesting shift in what used to work. And I'm using air quotes, but what really works. And I think that, you know, we as practitioners and educators have to be on top of our A-game, just like doctors and lawyers and all those kinds of professions out there. So I love that you are in the process of having your team update all of that good stuff. So that's great. You know what your story is reminding me of too, Lauren? I think so often when we think about switching, making these switch to science of reading, it can sound very daunting and very overwhelming and like this long-term stressful experience. But that example you just gave of Mm -hmm. the word wall and how a simple little shift can have profoundly bigger impact on kids learning yes. is such a great one because there are so many small little shifts just like that that we can make that will help brains learn faster and easier than ever before. And so it doesn't have to be this big overwhelming thing. We just have to take it one step at a time and pretty soon you're going to turn around and realize, "Oh my gosh, I'm teaching in a completely different way. I'm getting right. dramatically better results. This hasn't been overwhelming. This has actually been really fun and motivating and exciting." Right. And that's really the shift that we need to kind of think about. And I know sometimes the older teachers, you know, what is it? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. You can. It's just that some teachers might be stuck in their ways. And, you know, I've heard it from everything to these kids didn't exist 20 years ago to lesson I've been doing for 15 years. And it's like, that's the problem. That is the absolute problem. I will never forget this. I had a teacher that I was observing and giving some support because this particular teacher had a lot of language-based learning difference kiddos in the math class in which this teacher taught. And I kid you not, this teacher stood up at the front, very lecture style and said, I've been doing this since 1981. I was like, I literally was in the back of the room and my jaw dropped. I'm like, are we kidding right now? 1981? (laughs) It's insane. It's insane. So we definitely have to, you know, make sure we're up to date on things. So Awesome. 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 Well, I have another question for you because I'm really excited to hear about this. I'd love to hear more about your training courses and memberships and who are these geared towards? Are they geared for parents? Are they geared for teachers? Tell us a little bit about that. So the training that I do is called the Reading Roadmap. And my goal with that was to create an all-in-one system that any human on the planet who was helping (laughs) learn how to read would be able to essentially just plug in, set up and go year after year. I mean, yes, of course, you need to be able to make tweaks and adjustments based on your class or your the students you're working with. But I wanted to create a complete system so that people were not having to go out and Google these tools or Google this information. So the reading roadmap gives you all of the training you need, all of the tools you need. And then the third piece that is missing in a lot of cases is support. I've just found over and over again that teachers are really missing that connection. They don't have support from admin or Mm -hmm. they don't have a team of grade level partners that they can turn to when they have a student in class who is really struggling. And so one of the things that our team has really been committed to is providing that easy access to support. So we have an entire team that's just devoted to answering Roadmapper's questions and they're all teachers, they're all trained in the reading roadmap. And so we just made sure that that piece was part of this puzzle as well, so that everybody would know going in, we are 100% committed to your success. We're not going to let you fail. <laughs> so that's the yeah. reading roadmap. And then we have the Play-Doh Pack too. That's for pre-K, kinder, and first grade teachers. We do have some homeschoolers in that, but that membership is primarily geared toward teachers because it gives you an all-access pass to every teaching tool that we've ever created. Wow. They have a giant vault of resources at their fingertips that they can search through and find exactly what they need whenever they need it. Wow. What does that membership look like? How much of an investment is that for teachers? So the membership is $297 and the reading roadmap training is $397. Wow. That's amazing. I love this. 
like I said, I love how you said this has been over a decade. This takes a lot of time and effort. And it's very clear to me that this is your life's work. And I love that. I love that about you. So we are coming to the end of our episode. This is a quick little episode, but I love keeping them short because I know nowadays our attention span is not very long. And I want to get that information in for you all to absorb. So Malia, where can people find you? Where can people reach out and contact you to get in touch? Well, I would love to connect. I can be reached at Play-Doh, like you play with Play-Doh, to Plato, like Socrates.com. <laughs> you can find a ton of resources there. And then I also love to hang out over on Instagram. That's my favorite social media platform. I love the hearts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that is Play-Doh and then the number two, Plato. Well, Malia, thank you so much for taking time out of your extremely busy day to chat with me and to share all of the amazing work that you're doing, the book that you have written with our audience today. So be sure to click the link in the show notes, subscribe, share this episode with anyone that you think really would need it and it resonates with them. So thanks again, Malia, and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much for having me.